It's time now for This Is Life with Rob McGowan. How we live always changes the world around us. Hi, this is Rob with Life Radio, and uh, we're here trying to do another interview with uh, my friend Alan Campbell uh, with Refugees Ministries and uh, the great work they're doing across the country and making a huge impact. And uh, I wanted to get this one right, so I figured we'd redo it and just... Uh, Get good lighting and good conversation going. So how are you today, Alan? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. So how's work? Uh, busy? Busy day. Oh, yes. Good day. That's good. Busy days are good. It means we're getting something accomplished. We always like yeah. that. So how did you get into uh, youth ministry, per se, like uh, in, the, in the first place? Well, I was invited in uh, 2003 after sharing my testimony on 100 Huntley Street to do a youth chapel service with a church in Edmonton, Alberta. And we went on a Tuesday night to do the youth chapel service. And there was a 12 year old boy who accepted the Lord, but his role models were Charles Manson and Jeffrey Dahmer. Wow. And I left the youth jail to get on the airplane to fly back to London, realizing that nothing was really being done for him. So my pastor said, um, I need you to write a business plan to be able to show why there's a need for what you want to do. Awesome. So you did it. And uh, what year was this now? So how 2003. Long? Okay. So you got out and you must have had lots of complications on the way getting going yeah. as anybody does with any business. It's like, is this ever going to work? Did you ever feel, was there a turning point where you thought, well, it's getting out there now, at least the message is getting out there. Well, it's very hard when you begin to pioneer something because people want to see results, but you really haven't been doing very much to show results. Yes. But the longer that we did it, the more we, the more results and the more fruit we began to see. That's awesome. So, and just so people know, uh, basically it's a, you have a, a hotline number people can call and you have right. a ministry that that's played with all the local radio stations across the country, basically. And it goes into the youth prisons uh, with the stories through refugees ministries and, and where they refugees, can hear where people that went um, through hardships, right? We've just done our 50th show. And it's available on a number of podcasts and nine radio stations across Canada. Awesome. And all of those are available on our website, www.refugeministriescanada.com, which also uh, will let people know the other areas of ministry that we're involved in. That's incredible. Well, I thank you for the work you're doing and trying to make a difference in people's lives and uh, spreading good word and the message out there. And uh, I, I want to see great success. That's why I figured thank get you on the show. Let's let's talk about this. So how do, how can people support you and your ministries and the things that you're doing to help the youth? The most important thing they can do is pray for us. Okay. Um, if they're in a community where there is a youth jail, and they have a church or a group of people that would like to volunteer, we can certainly train them how to do that. Of okay. course, they can become a monthly sponsor or um, make a donation through our webpage. But the most important thing is uh, just pray because only 14% of the youth that are convicted actually go into custody. So if we can share the Lord with them and get them to accept the Lord, we can impact a generation. So when you say train, what, what would they be training to do? How would they help the people that volunteer from church? Uh, we do a training seminar okay. that lasts about an hour and a half that begins with the biblical mandate of why we should be involved in prison ministry talks about vision 
and then carries right on through to some of the do's and don'ts um, while you're doing a chapel service in a youth custody facility. Okay. So, so it's the training is just for ministers or is it just? Anyone. So anyone Volunteer that would be going or coming into contact with people in these youth centers. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to put it in focus, like how, so if you're in a church and you want to volunteer, what, what would you be asked to do maybe? What's something that you could do to volunteer for a youth center? Well, when we do a chapel service, we go in for about an hour. Okay. And uh, we'll have some music, have a lesson. Um, so you might be part of the music. You could be a singer or a guitar player. Different absolutely. Music. Okay. Awesome. Be part of a ministry team. Oh, okay. That's great. That's that's a, a good thing to have. And some, and also, I suppose, after when people get out or if they want to be able to contact, uh, we have ways through that, building in the communities where they'd have people to contact and help them out and things like that. Absolutely. We, um, we have a network right across Canada. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate the, the work you guys are doing. It's great. And... Uh, must so how many how many hours you must work a lot of hours trying to keep this all in check and contact well, we actually, with the different stations and stuff we actually just um moved into our ministry office on april the 1st and we're here every day from 10 o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon okay but i also find myself having to do some ministry at home as well. Yeah, it's not, I imagine it's nonstop. <laughs> and uh, and so is your wife part of the ministry too, or does she help you out? Or uh, my wife works full time okay. as a personal support worker. Okay. But she is involved as much as she can be. Awesome. And then we have about twenty volunteers that oh, are actively great. involved. Volunteers make the world go round, don't they? <laughs> we couldn't live without them, I tell you. No. And I, I've, I've been lobbying the local. We have this election going on right now. And I've been talking to all the local election people about how how can we support our volunteers a little more? You know, make it yeah. a little more enticing because a lot of uh, the older people are dropping off now. You know, they just can't keep up with the demand anymore. And young people just don't seem to be as interested as uh, it used to be a big thing, but it's not so much anymore. I think the important thing Rob, is to have volunteers that have a vision for what you're doing. They really okay. just want to be able to use the gift that they have been given. And the one thing that I've learned is as a leader, we have to be secure enough to equip and release others. And I have surrounded myself with people that are good at things that I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing to do for sure. <laughs> I got to work hard on that for sure. Cause there's, I can't do most things, <laughs> especially when it comes to the internet and all the stuff on here and all the technologies. So for example, all. when we do our newsletter, I know what I want to put in it, but I send it to our volunteer Deb, who makes me look good for lack of a better word. <laughs> that's a good way to do it i need one of those <laughs> i'm forever making mistakes all the time it's all part of my mantra now yeah. <laughs> they call me big mistake rob around here <laughs> <laughs> i know what i'm good at and i know what i'm not good at oh well, that's a good thing that's a good thing to get it all in control well i i certainly appreciate everything you're doing alan and uh, uh getting the word out there and, and making a difference and helping it's the important part of our society youth you know at their most vulnerable point when they're uh, can go one way or the other and uh, getting them to go in the right direction is always well like i say we can impact a generation right 100 percent, 100 percent. well is there anything you want to say to people or any general thing that you'd like to get out there um some heartfelt thing pull at the heartstrings now come on <laughs> get them to open up their book say come on help us out Just if they could pray for us, and if they were led to um, 
financially support us, that would be great. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Ask God. And then if God puts it on your heart to do it, then that's important. And if they're a pastor of a church or have three or four individuals even that would like to do some youth prison ministry, just contact us and we can uh, go from there. Awesome. Awesome. We'll get that out. Uh, and actually, I think I'll put something out to the churches too to uh, see what we can get. I, knew a few, I know a few pastors, maybe we can get something going that yeah. way. That'd be awesome. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking some time to uh, talk with us, Alan, about what you're doing across the country. And uh, we, it's helping here in our community and the show each week that we can put it on. So I, I, I'm thankful for what you're doing. And Rob, I just want to thank you for your tremendous support and having the show on Life Radio. Thank you. No trouble. Anytime, Alan. Well, again, thank you. And uh, anything we can do anytime, just let us know. Okay. You have a great day. Thanks very much. Thanks, Alan. God bless you. You too. God bless. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see